This mantis that we're looking at is the Chinese mantis, Tenodera sinensis. And uh, we hatched this one from an egg, uh, an egg case. And uh, we were feeding it fruit flies up until just a couple of molts ago. This one's a female, although it is pretty small. Yeah, typically, it's a little smaller than usual. Typically, they're a little bit bigger than this, so uh, maybe the cold might have influenced it. might not have gotten as much to eat as some of its sisters. Um, you know, a lot of things can influence yeah, the size. It just vary a little bit, yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, but still has a pretty healthy appetite, so we'll see if it wants this cricket. So, it's usually, usually it's pretty hungry, but, you know, it's out here in a little bit of a colder temperature, so we might see some difference in the, the behavior of some of these mantises we're going to look at. Oh, oh, oh. Yep. Yeah, definitely went it. for it. <laughs> now, uh, a while back you had a African mantis, a big one. Yes. Sadly, I don't have that one anymore. did make a great specimen, though. It's in my collection. I'd and I remember you were, you were someday. feeding it a piece of a banana. You said, oh, it eats <laughs> bananas. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. no way. And that's not the first mantis I've got to eat banana, in fact. Uh, you would be surprised. Um, once, they, once they get a taste for that sweet stuff, it's just like, it's like mantis candy, man. And is that something that you had heard of and tried? I, or? In researching about it, yeah, I've, I'd heard that people did offer them certain types of very ripe, fresh fruit. And, um, you know, I, I guess I could see how that might happen in the jungle. Sure. If it, you know, if Wherever it's they were. walking around and it finds a piece of fruit that broke open or fell down. Because that's good good nutrients for them, give them a lot of energy to keep going. I can also see them maybe just being attracted to uh, getting moisture. Oh, for sure, yeah. And do they ever drink? Do they ever, do you ever see them just drink drops of water mm -hmm. off a leaf? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Just They're, they're a lot like phasmids in that regard. Um, well, the, the ones that live in a humid environment are anyway. Yeah. I'll spray their tank and they'll lower their head right down to a droplet to slurp it down. I guess that makes sense. The drier ones don't really seem to do that as much, but I, you know, they're evolved for getting most of their moisture just from the bugs that they. Well, they're just really, it's really methodical, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's just chewing on a leg. This one, the these have the green stripe on the side. Mm -hmm. So I've seen these in New England, um, in Connecticut. Uh, mm -hmm. There were a lot of them, and yeah, they're, they're all, they've been all introduced, over the US. introduced there. And this is the one with the big egg case that you see for sale at nurseries, right? Yeah. Be, hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Actually, I think I might still have it lying around here. It's a very large egg case, about the size of a walnut. Yeah. Here it is. So. And there must be a couple of hundred come out of there, isn't there? There's what she hatched out of, and yeah, probably between 75 and 100 came out of that egg case. Pretty good size. It's yeah. very foamy. Yeah. Um, light now that it's like natural styrofoam. Absolutely, yeah. And that helps protect it in the winter, you know. If it gets snowed on or rained on, those eggs are still safe and sound. And um, parasite, wasp parasites. Oh, I didn't even think of that, but yeah, I bet I that see would be them, uh, I see them out in Arizona all the time. And um, Stegmanis, uh, I forget this species there, but um, they're, they have little holes drilled in them from parasitic wasps. Hmm. Interesting. Right. Well, right. So this is a fairly common species. Yeah, that's going to be probably the most common one that you would see at pet stores and, and different places. Where I got it was actually a plant nursery, the Indoor Sun Shop. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with them. Yeah. Um, and they, you know, they sell them as pest control. It's um, very common to have a gardener, you know, get an egg case and set it out in their Although garden. Although I have a lot of doubt about that because they're not selective. They eat beneficials, oh. well, too. Well, that's true, yeah. Well, and also, there's no way to guarantee they're actually going to stay Bees and, and spiders. And, right, and they eat each other, so by the time they all hatch out, you've only got a few anyway. Yeah. It's, so. it's more or less just a fun novelty. I mean, yeah. if, you wanna, if you have an aphid problem and you want to you wanna see what happens and hopefully see an adult mantis a couple months down the road walk across your lawn, then go for it. You know? Yeah, get some ladybugs. Yeah. All right, let's look, at it. let's look at a different sure, one. All right, so now we have another mantis, which is uh, camouflaged. You can probably see it there. It has these uh, dead leaves here. And here is the mantis right there. Uh, Deriplates lobata. lobata. And that's her egg case that she's, that's sitting behind her. I've heard of a desiccata, too. Is that a similar yes, species? Same, same, same genus, different species. A little bit uh, different Very shape. closely related, yeah. Yeah. Uh, same region of the world, though. And this is an egg case that she's perched next to. Mm -hmm. She just laid well, that egg so. case probably two or three weeks ago. Uh, it will not hatch because there was no male in there yeah. with her. Yeah, infertile. Um, but that doesn't dis dis deter her from laying a. a All right. Well, let's see if you now see if you can get her to open her wings. Okay. Well, sometimes sometimes she'll do what they call a dematic display, which is you know the uh, threat posturing. So if I if I kind of come at it from the side, occasionally it'll frighten it and it'll make it pop its wings out. So I don't want to do anything that would... Frighten, you know, presuming that they anything. can experience fear. Right, right. It's more or less just a, <laughs> a bluff, really, because it's yeah. not going to be able to... 
It's a, Let's see if we can a response. I can come at it and startle it. Although honestly, this one's this one's been held a few times by now, so it's kind of used to uh, a little more acclimated to. Yeah. So sometimes when that happens, it, it has some experience. Let's yeah. Say that. A, a freshly molted one is really prone to doing those threat postures, whereas one that's kind of been around, seen the world a lot, it starts to think, you know, ah, nothing's going to See, that's like get um, if you have a hissing cockroach that's never been held, and you pick it up, and it hisses like crazy. Mm, yeah. And the fiftieth <laughs> time you pick it up, it's just like, whatever. Yeah. All right. No, she's I don't think respond. she's going to do it. All right, we'll see if you can. All right, we'll see if you can uh, pick it up then and sure. get some, get it in your hand so we can get a look at it. This one's about what, two, two and a half, three inches maybe? maybe? About three, and a, three inches, yeah, two and a half, three inches, thereabouts. And this is a, a mature one. It's been around mm -hmm. for a while. It's a full size female. Hold it down here. And uh, Hold it down here. yeah. And so you can see it's got that, uh, it's got a hood over its back, or its thorax, yeah. um, sort of a diamond-shaped hood that further breaks up the camouflage there, makes it look even more like a leaf, to the point at which on the abdomen, uh, the wings, you can see what are what would be veins, leaf veins, yeah. you know, in the, in the leaf. Um, these appendages the on the legs, legs as too, well, yeah. right, make it look even more leaf-like. Have you seen any males of this species? I have, yeah. I actually have a specimen and, of a male. Oh, do you? Um, I can grab them if you'd like. Um, it, they're, they're much, much smaller. There's a really strong sexual dimorphism yeah, between the males and females. So, you know, he would be about that big. And uh, Of course, she, she's too large to fly. She has much too much mass to actually achieve any lift. Um, but she still has wings for camouflage, and you know that black underside coloring makes it a little uh, easier for her to stand out if she does want to be seen and do that threat posturing. Yeah. Yeah, that one does seem like it's quite used to being handled. Yeah. I got so, what species is this? This is Blepharoptus mendica, and this is a species from North Africa in the Mediterranean, the Canary Islands, that area. Uh, still a juvenile. Um, it's going to get a good amount, good amount bigger than that still. Um, and uh, it's going to have kind of a greenish set of wings um, with a pretty pretty neat looking pattern on it. They call it a thistle mantis. Uh, that's one of the names for it. It is really thistly looking, isn't yeah, it? And this is a juvenile. The, so how big did they that get? This is a juvenile. We're probably going to see her hopefully get to, you know, maybe about uh, between three and four ish oh, inches. Oh, pretty good size. So, as far as I can tell. This one's only about. Maybe an inch and a half now. It's still got some growing to do, for Depending sure. on how you measure it. Yeah, eyes, um, and it's kind of hard to see, but if you can look on the interior of those uh, front legs there, she's got kind of a, a unique color, unique pattern to them, and that continues to develop as she gets bigger, um, such that when she is doing those dematic displays as a full-size mantis, they, they look pretty intimidating. Um, yeah, they sure do. Especially if you're you know, a bird that's not expecting something like that. You might think twice about trying to trying to take that thing on for a snack, you know. I've seen a, a photograph of a dog. There's a mantis on the ground, and it's doing one of those displays, and the dog's, like, snarling at it. Mm -hmm. And it looks like the dog's going to, like, I don't know. I yeah, don't know well, that's, that thing. <laughs> that's what it's supposed to do, right? The creature is, is going to say, well, I don't know what that is, but I'm not going to take a chance on eating it yeah. in case it's toxic or bites or, you know, it's yeah. very dangerous. Yeah. Now, in this case, it's a bluff. The thing probably wouldn't be able to do anything. Yeah, but all you need to do is that? get stung by a bee or a wasp once, and you're going to be careful the oh, rest of the for time. Sure. Oh, yeah. Or a centipede or, you know, whatever it is. They're mm -hmm. very painful bites. So this is a female orchid mantis. Female orchid mantis. What's this genus? It's Coronuda. Uh, it's it's, it's hy Hymenopus. Hymenopus coronatus. Coronatus. The That's the species, coronatus. And it's, uh, uh, it's a very impressive mantis. Uh, pretty good size, too. Um, female, if it were a male, it would be significantly smaller. Really strong difference in size between the two genders with this species. Now, one of the things that a friend of mine read about was that they don't necessarily hang out in orchids. They don't hang out in flowers so much as they just look like a flower or perhaps even smell like one, and the insects are attracted to them. Yeah, it's funny. It, and in that regard, or orchid mantis, is, the name, is almost a misnomer because... First of all, they're not mimicking orchids. I mean, here we've placed it on an orchid just to sort of, yeah. you know, really get a sense for how well it, how well it mimics those flowers. But, um, you know, in its native environment, um, you know, Southeast Asia, 
it would be it would be mimicking some other type of white flower, not an orchid. And like you said, it probably wouldn't actually be hanging out on those flowers because if you think about it, the best chance it's going to get to have a bug land on it is, you know, not where the bug might land on other flowers that are it, that it's competing with, but if it's hanging out just on a green shrub somewhere else where it looks like a solitary bloom, you know, that a butterfly or a bee or something might want to land on, then it's probably going to have the best chance. But there are other predators. Uh, crab spiders and stuff oh, that sit sure. in flowers. Mm -hmm. um, and these ones would probably sit in flowers periodically, too. She does like to climb up to the, one yeah. of the higher points in the cave. Uh, the other thing is, flowers. orchids are only attracting very specific species of insects because they mimic their sex pheromones. True. The, true. the orchid offers no nectar or pollen or anything of any value, really, to uh, a pollinator like a bee or something. So if you were going to imitate, uh, if you were going to be imitating a flower, you'd imitate one that would attract more insects in general. Um, I guess it would probably be more accurate to just call it a white flower mantis. Yeah, but humans, like you know how humans are. They get an idea in their Right. Head. The first person that saw one thought, hey, that looks like an orchid. I bet it's an orchid mantis. And so that just sticks. So like that the, sticks. the bird eating tarantula. Exactly, yeah. Hey, that the looks mosquito about eater, eater, eater. The yeah. crane fly, the mosquito eater. Oh, yes. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. All right, now, can you pick it up so we can get a better look, uh, a sense of what it really looks yeah, like? Absolutely. It's kind of hard to see. Actually, in and this the flower. one, although it hangs out and holds still all day, it's it's pretty um, it's pretty jittery when it wants to be so. Arms. Big towery like um, cone shaped eyes, yeah. almost sort of a purple hue to them, gives it really good 3D vision. Yeah, I was gonna really say the shape vision. of that eyes. It reminds me a lot of um, uh, mantis shrimp. Yes, they have those tall yeah. eyes. Yeah, you see certain crustaceans that. Uh, uh, that have these sort of tower eyes. And, you know, you see yeah. it on ghost like, tri crabs. trilobite fossils as well. Ghost crabs. All of these things that want to be able to see both in front of them to the side and slightly behind them at the same time, it gives them sort of almost like oh, a panoramic, good. stereoscopic, wraparound vision. Uh, it's got some patterns on the wings, too. Mm -hmm. That's almost like disruptive coloration, those dark yeah. patches. And the wings, actually, if I were to, if I can maybe gently lift them up, we'd see actually that the wings are yellow. They're quite lovely. Oh, all right, let's see if we can she, do that. Yeah, yeah. And she is kind of skittish, but sometimes I can just kind of gently lift them up. Doesn't hurt her at all. But you can oh, see they that are they've yellow. got that very pretty yellow color to them. And she's going to... Well, that would be some kind of a display if it opened up. It would up. be, yeah. And she's, she, she doesn't do as much of the dramatic displays, really, as, the, uh, as some of the other species do. But I imagine if she did, flashing those yellow wings would be quite a warning sign as well. Well, it's, it's uh, striking to me because the only, so far the only orchid bandits I've seen that's not in a phonograph was just a very small nymph. So mm -hmm. I'm impressed by the yeah. size of this. And the, by the time they're this size... Um, Typically, they've, they've uh, pretty much decided on what uh, color they're going to be. You won't, see, um, you won't see them changing any colors by the time they're uh, adult like this. But a lot of them start out pink, and then they kind of shift to white. Yeah. Um, this one was looking like it might go pink. Um, and then in its next few molts, it got whiter and whiter. So I guess it's that was It's interesting, even the, the phrasing you used there, you said they did side. <laughs> yeah. They don't really decide. Yeah, right. There's no choice in the matter, I suppose. Um, it would come down to genetics. It would come down to, you know, maybe humidity and several other factors. There's a lot of arthropods that change color as they mature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. It's really great to see one the first time I've seen a, an adult like this. Yeah. It's okay. So we'll see if she wants this cricket. Usually she's, usually she's got a pretty good appetite. If you're just messing with her, too. True. Oh, 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 yeah, she oh, can't yeah. oh, don't eat the pedal now, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> She'll find it. She's clamped down on both the cricket and the petal of the flower. Looks like she's eating the antenna. Wow. I think she doesn't want to let go of the flower for fear of losing the bug. Um, uh, my friend who's got the nymph of the orchid mantis was telling me that it stalks the fruit flies and it sort of wiggles back and forth mm -hmm. in that way. Yes, they have that in a common with as well. Do, yeah. Uh, that classic movement. Um, Rocking back and forth. It definitely breaks up their um, breaks up their movement pattern. It looks a lot more like they're in a breeze or they're like yeah. a twig or a leaf yeah. or a flower. And you know, that makes sense if you think about it because if they're the only thing, if everything else was breezing and swaying, then if they weren't, wouldn't exactly be very good camouflage. I think there's even snakes that'll do that. I know that <laughs> the chameleons will do it, you know, uh, the lizards. Um, And then uh, she said that the uh, the other mantis she has the uh, uh, I think she's got the Asian one 
she said that one just charges after the bug, just like runs up to him, grabs it. Yeah, and some, it's funny, you know, in raising a lot of mantises, you'll see a, a, a lot of variation in their behavior. Some of them are, are very much clearly ambush predators like this one. Yeah. Uh, you know, when it's full size like this, all it does is hang out on that flower day yeah. in and day out. Yeah. You know, or somewhere else in the tank, holding still, waiting for something to come to it. And, and yet other mantises, you know, they'll, they'll very much charge headfirst towards the first thing they see moving and, and yeah, grab it. And really cueing in on movement. Absolutely, yeah. Individual. So. Yeah, it's really magnificent. I can see why they're so desirable. It's like people really like to, to get these. Yeah. I imagine this might be difficult to preserve and to keep the color. Yeah, it's a good question. I, I don't know how it's going to um, how it's going to uh, react. Um, definitely, I'll want to to gut it and give it an acetone soak. Yeah. But um, I don't know how it'll hold up. Well, even you, with the acetone, uh, the experimenting I've done, you want to be careful not to do it too long. You you would do it'll have bleach them out, orchid, right? You've, I do. It was um, uh, I don't know what color it was originally, and it's a very old specimen I got from someone who he's had it since the 70s. I think he got it in in uh, Borneo when he was in hmm. the Peace Corps or something. So it's a pretty washed out specimen. You, you know, it's, you can experiment, but you don't have a lot of these to experiment exactly, on. Exactly, yeah. I would want to uh, be as careful as possible, not take any liberties if I could help it. We'll do a little research. Yeah. Okay, this is the one I'm most excited about. So this is Gongloides gungailus, is that right? Mm-hmm. Yes, the wandering violin as it's commonly known. Uh, named that obviously because of its almost impossibly thin thorax. Yeah, really extreme morphology. In yeah, this. as as a as an adult, its uh, its wings actually will make it look um, a lot like the body and neck of a violin. Hence the name. Uh, this one isn't full size yet. Obviously, it's got a little bit more growing to do. Um, and uh, it's got I, a horn, I, a horn on the head. He does. Yep, I believe it's a female it's as well. Got flaps on, on the, the legs. Antenna. Um, so it's got some of those other features that, uh, like you saw in the dead leaf, with those those leafy patterns on the legs. Um, you see, it's got a little mini shield on the uh, prothorax there yep. as well. Yeah. Um, but just in general, it's going to blend in with you know dead grasses, um, various things of that uh, of that tannish hue. So amazing. Yeah, and it's very. Oh, there we go. You see it. See how skittish <laughs> it is. It's very. Um, it's very timid. This one doesn't get handled a whole lot. Um, and it also doesn't really care for um, crickets a whole lot. It'll it'll eat them, um, but it what it prefers are um, outdoor types of uh, bugs like your flies, your moths, things that I would have to catch in the wild. And since it's been so chilly here, it's actually been harder for me to get uh, fresh flies. Interesting. To give to it just them. doesn't respond to cricket movement the same way as. No. Maybe more focused on flying insects? Yeah, and sometimes I can kind of trick it by, you know, jiggling a cricket around like it's flying in. Yeah. Um, and it'll still grab it and devour it, but um, it's a little harder. I just love this thing. The first one of these I saw was a preserved specimen in a collection at OSU, Corvallis. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, what the heck is that? <laughs> and I have never seen one available or in any other collections. It's one of those things I would love to get. I'm really interested in the uh, morphology, extreme morphology, so it well illustrates, um, you know, adaptation. Yeah, for sure. And this is going to be a dry mantis. This is from a, a, a pretty... Um, They're from India, aren't they? Yeah, uh, I think Sri Lanka and uh, southern <laughs> India in that area. So it's going to be pretty extreme heat-wise. Um, you know, of course, they have a wet season, too, but uh, these guys are going to do most of their growing and their life cycle um, in the dry season, as I understand it. So, um, it's a very, it's a, it's a mantis that's used to extremes, I would yeah. say. Um, I, I keep it at a pretty consistent 85 temperature um, in its cage, um, or shoot for that anyway. And uh, that's the way it likes it, or even hotter. Um, it's perfectly adapted to that. Wow. That thing is just amazing. It's really otherworldly. And it's doing that sort of swaying. Mm -hmm. It does that classic sway, just like you see with stick bugs and certain other mantises that want to mimic that light breeze that they'd get caught in. Fabulous.
Mm -hmm. Okay, good. We've got a meeting. Now, typically, he does prefer flies, moths, other flying insects. These guys are so skilled they can pull a flying bug right out of the air. Really? Yeah, I've seen them do it. It's it's astounding. Uh, but they will settle for for crawling bugs, you yeah. know, like like a you know feeder feeder crickets, feeder roaches, things like that. But yeah, it, they they tend to definitely prefer the. Yeah, flies. you got a foodie. A foodie gets hungry enough, and he'll eat a hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> I actually haven't tried the banana trick with this one yet, really? but uh, I would be curious if he would try fruit too, because fruit almost always works on the tropical mantises, but uh, one that's that's from such a dry region like this, I don't know, I would wonder if he would be interested in that or if he would just take a bite and throw it, yeah. spit it out. Yeah. That's great. That's fantastic. I mean, I thought the orchid mantas were awesome, and they are. But well, they're all awesome in their own way. In their they're own all, way, but they're this all so thing, unique. This thing is just so cool. It really is. Fantastic species of mantis. The wandering violin. <laughs>